I am just so happy to be here today. It has been a dream of mine to visit Boston, and considering the fact that a year ago I actually even became a hockey fan and I chose the Boston Bruins as my team, to be here today, a year later, is freaking awesome, and it shows me that I am on the right path. My name is Ilan Dene. I started my journey as a self-taught developer on August 9th, 2020. I am not affiliated with any company. I re actually recently quit my job <laughs> as a payroll specialist at, for a charter school back in June, so just a couple months ago. I am here to represent myself and to tell my story. My journey of learning how to code has been a very interesting one. Not only have I learned about coding itself, the language, the frameworks, the back end, front end, the different types of projects, I've also learned about the types of dialogue and discussions being had around tech and coding in general. And in these discussions, I have learned that there is a lot of fear when it comes to technology. There is fear of being replaced by technology. There's fear of using technology. And there's fear of not being, a, being smart enough to learn about technology or even speak about technology. And there's fear of not being up to date in technology. But technology comes from the power of the mind, our minds. It was birthed from our imagination. If we can learn the power of our own minds and how to control our thoughts, we will never have to be afraid of technology ever again. In this session, we will learn how with discipline, intentional positive thoughts can change not only your life, but also the world. Being here today is an absolute treat because it shows how far I've come. To be honest, it took me a while to even write this talk because to tell this story, to tell my story, means to one, recount a story behind another story, and two, reflect on instances that feel light years away. I am not the same person that I used to be. I do not identify with my old belief systems or my old story. I don't even have the same thoughts, and this has all been very intentional. So I am here to talk about overcoming fear. However, it was fear that actually pushed me into learning how to code. Like I said, I began learning how to code back in 2020, and I'm sure many of us remember what happened in 2020, and if you don't, you're doing great. <laughs> you're an inspiration. Um, for me, in 2020, it was the fear of the world ending that drove me to learn how to code. There was the global pandemic, the isolation and the loneliness of the quarantine, uh, the violent civil unrest, the intense presidential election, and in general, the uncertainty of the future. During this time, there was a lot of fear, a lot of fear. And it felt like there were different types of fears being played out in front of me, um, illness, politics, poverty, violence, isolation, mass hysteria. <laughs> Even the air itself was seen as a threat. And I felt like I was being backed into a corner. However, out of all of it, there is something about being afraid of the very thing you need to survive that really just does something to you. When air becomes the enemy, who cares anymore? That's when I began learning how to code. What did I have to lose? Tech jobs paid better. Many were remote. I was certain that my job duties at the time would eventually be automated. So in tech, I felt that the job security was there. At a time where people were losing their jobs at record numbers, while the tech industry was booming, it was obvious that tech skills were very important in a post-pandemic society. It was survival for me. It is kind of interesting looking back though, that as someone who thought that the world was going to end, I thought that a skill <laughs> was going to save me. In retrospect, it was the skill that gave me hope to go on. 
I was desperate to find light in the darkness, so I created it. I picked C Sharp as a language. I bought a couple Udemy courses. I created my Twitter account. I found my C Sharp and .NET community. I met my close friend, Sophie. I connected with my mentor at the time, Jake, who would be my mentor for one whole year, all the way across the globe. And it was awesome. This was all done online. The first year and a half of learning C Sharp was intense. And I honestly get nauseous when I think back at how intense it was. Because like I said, this was survival for me. I had to learn this skill. I had to understand it for my loved ones, for myself. And it was in the first few months of learning C Sharp that my double life began. There was my life as a full-time payroll and retirement specialist. And then there was my life as an emerging programmer. I basically created my own personal boot camp after work. I met once a week with Jake to discuss concepts. I met once every two weeks with Sophie for our book study, and we read Where Wizards Stay Up Late, The Origins of the Internet by Katie Hapner and Matthew Lyon E. I continued to meet amazing people on Twitter. I joined group chats. I worked on concepts and exercises every day. I even found myself trying to solve certain exercises in my sleep. Like I was actually dreaming of solutions <laughs> to, to my exercises. This was a completely new world for me, and I was obsessed. This was my way out of the chaos, out of the darkness. It was an outlet for my overthinking. Rather than worrying about the outside world, it gave me the opportunity to shift my focus and problem solve within my projects. Towards the end of 2020, the outside world got weirder. And the weirder it got, the more I retreated into my own personal inner world. January 2021 was when I decided to drop the rope completely. There was too much confusion and too many contradictions to make sense of the truth. And I gave up. I turned off the news, I stopped watching TV, I stopped consuming a lot of social media. I decided to rely on my own personal wisdom, on my own gut instincts and intuition to guide me. This was the beginning of a new yet different type of journey, a journey that I initially thought was separate from my coding journey, but that I would later discover as completely and extremely relevant. I began to research the power of the mind. I can't remember what exactly led me to this, but I studied the concept of paradigm shifting. I got tired of feeling like a victim. I was done with identifying as a victim. My life was going to change and it was going to change for the better. To the point where my life and my security didn't just rest on a skill. I began to learn about positive affirmations and how with positive affirmations, you change your entire destiny. See, the funny thing about fear is that although it can be a great motivator, it does a terrible job at sustaining. Fear is fleeting. And once you gain understanding of something you fear, it's not really scary anymore, which makes it an illusion. Fear is what initially motivated me to learn how to code, but fear cannot keep me motivated to continue the journey. And this is something I realized looking back. Practicing positive affirmations and positive thinking made my life more fun. I was not as afraid as I was before, and I mean, obviously, the world didn't end. The quarantine and restrictions were lessening. Things didn't seem as dire as they once were before. And as I had more fun in my life, I noticed that I was a bit bored with coding. It was April 2021. I felt stagnant in my coding journey. I wanted to know and learn more, but in a fun way. I wanted to learn about MVC and ASP.NET Core, and I had felt that I felt kind of guilty that I might have missed a step in learning about.NET. 
I spoke with Sophie about doing another potential book study and she suggested reading the littleasp.net core book by Nate Barbatini and that it would be a great resource. She suggested that we allow other people to join us, which I loved. And we announced in a group chat, whoever was interested could join. And then I met my online friend and now co-host Gabriel. We had our first book study session and it was amazing. It was fun and it was a great conversation about the first two chapters of the book. And at the end of that meeting, Gabriel suggested um, that we have sessions in podcast form. I thought the idea was brilliant. This was the start of my YouTube channel as well as .NET Book Study. It was such a crazy yet exciting experience at the time because just a few months prior, I didn't even feel equipped enough or experienced enough to even tweet about C Sharp and .NET. And now I'm on YouTube talking about it. I was becoming more comfortable with putting myself out there. And it was because I was seeing myself in a new light. Maybe I didn't need to be an expert to have a valuable perspective. It was at this point in time that I started to entertain the idea of fun in my coding journey. However, the switch off between fun and fear was still a bit slow. For the following months after, up until the end of 2021, I would go on studying nearly every day. Pushing myself a bit too hard at times, isolating myself a bit too much in order to study, hoping that potential employers could see my value as a potential employee, just wanting to make myself appear valuable, while also balancing the growing demands of my current employer at the time. Don't get me wrong though, it, was, it wasn't all bad, not at all. Um, I was still learning how to have fun. I was still learning how to have faith in myself and in my life. And I was seeing amazing new things happen for me. I was on a podcast for the first time. I spoke at a conference for the first time. I even traveled out of the States for the first time. The world was opening up to me. And I was falling in love with myself and, and with my life. I just found myself frustrated a lot in the process. And it was because at the time, I was not disciplined in my positive thoughts. So why are positive thoughts so important? Well, it is because your thoughts create your reality. What I've come to know is that as developers and just human beings, we need to understand how to hack the original computer, the brain, more specifically, the mind. Like I said before, this new yet different type of journey that I was on had everything to do with coding. You see, each thought that you have is a line of code and your mind is the code editor, kind of like VS Code or Visual Studio. Now, when you are coding, you are adding lines of code in the code editor and it returns an output, right? Well, when you are thinking, you are adding thoughts in your mind and the output is your reality. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Albert Einstein. If you put negative thoughts into your mind, you're going to get negative results. It's just as true that if you put positive thoughts in your mind, you will be a recipient of positive results. Lou Holtz. The world as we created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Albert Einstein again. The sentiments in these quotes are what I've come to know as true. And I've learned this truth by paying attention to the patterns of my life. I noticed that whenever an event occurred that I perceived as negative, I would allow my thoughts to spiral in frustration. I would think negative thoughts, thoughts of lack, thoughts of victimhood, thoughts of struggle. And it would get to the point where I would fall ill like I would literally become sick. At first, I didn't see it as clear, but after a couple of times, I've noticed this pattern in my life. Or something good can even happen. And I worry 
about, okay, what next? How can I keep amazing things in my life? And then I would spiral again, diminishing a great positive moment by not staying in the present and thinking my positive thoughts. Another pattern I noticed that once I started spiraling and thinking negative thoughts, not only would problems occur in one area of my life, I would have problems in another area of my life. I started to notice these patterns and then I got fed up. I realized that out of all of these negative circumstances, I was the common denominator. And it wasn't me personally who was the problem. The problem was my thoughts. It was the negative lines of code that I was allowing in my project, in my editor. And because I allowed these negative lines of code in my project, it was returning a negative output in my reality. So getting back to fear and tech. Before I learned how to code, the general discussion that I saw online was that tech was bad because it was putting people out of jobs that they desperately needed in order to survive. Another type of discussion that I would see was that tech is inherently evil. It is suspicious and it is out to get you. The more advanced tech gets, the more you become a victim of it. When I started learning how to code, a big topic that I saw was imposter syndrome, that many people felt like they weren't advanced enough or experienced enough to talk about tech or hold a high rank position in tech. And then an interesting fear that I picked up on as I continued, continued my journey was that there was fear of not being up to date in tech or doing tech wrong. I've seen so many YouTube videos with the title, stop doing this thing this particular way, or is such and such obsolete now, or reasons why you should not be a developer, which kind of gives the impression that tech is a runaway train and that you could be left behind at any moment. But the truth is, technology is a tool created by us for us. To take it further, technology is the product of our imagination. It can never be bigger than us because our imagination is what created it. That's how powerful we are. And when we understand that, we take the pressure off of ourselves. That's when the fun begins. January 2022 is when I had to get real with myself about what I wanted. I was over certain fears before because remember the world didn't end and I stopped listening to a lot of outside opinions. So the next thing was getting in control of my thoughts. What do I want? What do I want out of life? What's important to me? I had to write it down and I had to be unapologetic about it because when you take away the baggage of fear, the baggage of outside opinion, all that is left is you and your desires. All that is left is you living as your authentic self. So I decided what I wanted. One of the things I wanted was to have my own brand. Something that is mine, something that is authentic to me. And that's when I created Elandine Codes. Rather than yearning for external validation and hoping that my skills as a self-taught developer would be recognized, I wanted to just create, create in the most fun way possible. I wanted to be in the present moment and to have fun. And from January to June, that is exactly what I did. I created Instagram content. I live streamed .NET book study episodes on YouTube and Twitch. I wrote, a develop, I wrote for a developer magazine um, in Germany. I wrote a blog. I helped create new a new live stream show called Inside.net. It's super new. <laughs> The only thing though, was that I was still working as a full-time payroll and retirement specialist. And the job was growing in its demands and I realized that I could not take it anymore. I was burnt out for my double life. I was not being fully honest in who I was and I was divided in my being. I was there for, at my previous job for about five years. It was right after I graduated college. And I felt like through this journey, I outgrew the space completely to the point where I felt like I was living a lie. 
and I was still battling with the fear of poverty and lack. You know, usually in motivational speeches, there is always a comment about only quitting your job when you are ready and you have a backup plan or a new job lined up. But what happens when your desire is to change your life completely? I remember back in March being so frustrated and burnt out, I told myself, I am not quitting my job unless I am forced to. And that is exactly what ended up happening. In May, suddenly, my specialist position was ending. And I didn't feel that I was a good fit for the proposed new positions. I was invested in tech. That was my path that I decided on. And the positions had nothing to do with tech or coding. It was not for me. That day, when I admitted to my boss my double life, we were going through the positions, and I, it was a situation where I had to act fast because time was running out and the positions needed to be filled. I was so afraid. I felt like I wasn't ready to quit and that I didn't have my backup plan. But after everything that happened, I just couldn't go on the way that I was. And also, this is exactly what I wanted. This was my sign, my cue. And at that moment during the, the discussions of the jobs being filled, I understood that it was my fear of lack that was talking. And like I said before, fear is fleeting, which makes it an illusion. So that is when I decided to finally quit my job. At the time, I was so mad because in an event like this, with quitting my job, it is described as taking a leap of faith. And I hated it. The idea of juggling between financial security and my happiness, this or that, either or, the duality of a situation like this pissed me off. But then I told myself, there is no leap of faith. I do not negotiate with my life. I have it all. I am secure. And that is what I know. I made it a point to get disciplined in my thoughts. Whenever a negative thought popped up in my mind, I would shut it down. Nope, not doing it. Nope, not going there. Nope, not real. <laughs> then I would go into saying my positive affirmations, using repetition to create my new belief systems over and over again, tuning out anyone who projected their limited beliefs onto me over and over again. The more disciplined I got in my positive thoughts, the more I noticed that things just started to work out for me. Things just got easier for me. Rather than creating problems and building them up in my head through worry and doubt, I shifted my focus to the things I actually wanted. I fixated my mind on the positive, on the beauty through repetition, and I dwelled in it. I gave up the struggle. Have you ever felt like you were living a double life? Like you were stuck? If you are in a position where you feel stuck, it is time to debug your mind. What types of patterns are you noticing in your life and within yourself and within your world? Because we are never really stuck. It is only our perception that keeps us stuck. And you change your perception by changing the thoughts you allow in your mind. You have to tend to your mind the way you would a garden or the way you would with a special app of yours. You change your mental code, you change your life. You decide your future. You allow your dreams to come true because the distance between you and your dreams is only your mindset. And that, this is something that I've learned on my coding journey. Once you debug your mind, you allow yourself to be the creator of your own light. Your light is something that cannot be taken away from you because you are in charge of it. You and only you. Whether it is from childhood trauma or the events that we see in the news, at times when you look at the world, you will probably feel that all you see is darkness. If you are not mindful, you may even start to define yourself, your abilities and your vision within the scope of this darkness. There may be negative voices in your mind that will try to keep you afraid. 
These voices come from the fear-based conditioning many of us have been born into. But the amazing thing is that conditioning can be replaced. Being a positive person gets easier over time. Creating your light gets easier over time. It may be hard to let go because the fears that we have can feel very personal and intimate to us. We've carried it with us for so long. We've learned to identify with it. We've made it our story. But it is time to step into the new story. Self-love and encouragement is more intimate and freeing. Who are you without your worries and your woes? That is the truth of who you are. In your truth, your light will shine so bright that you will be a guide for others in the same darkness from which you once were. Thank you.